Well guys, as promised, it is time for me to share with you the sunscreen empties. Woo! One of my favorite videos to film. I don't know why I just did that clapping applause thing, but I am in a good mood because spring is here. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day out today, and I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects on the planet, sunscreens that I liked enough to actually use up. Now, I have many sunscreens in rotation currently, so I have other sunscreens that I use as well. First is one I discovered in 2023, started using uh, sometime in early 2023, I wanna say, finally finished up. It is the CeraVe Hydrating Sheer Sunscreen SPF 30, water resistant, 80 minutes. This is a hybrid sunscreen, meaning it has inorganic active sunscreen ingredients and organic active sunscreen ingredients. Specifically, it has zinc oxide, that's the inorganic. It has homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. Those are the organic sunscreen active ingredients. Bit of a white cast here, as is typical of most hybrid sunscreens because of the zinc. For me, the cast on this is modest, not really noticeable. It works well under makeup, doesn't pill, and it's moisturizing, it's hydrating. It doesn't leave the skin feeling tight and dry, as can sometimes happen. It has ceramides in it per usual from CeraVe, which are good for improving skin's moisture barrier, especially in the realm of improving production of ceramides in the skin, which are lipids that are key players in that watertight seal that makes up the skin barrier. Now, this product also has niacinamide in it, as do many CeraVe products. Niacinamide is an ingredient that is great in so many regards. It has so many beneficial things to offer your skin. It's good for the moisture barrier, and it's also good for improving production of things like ceramides in the skin. It's anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant. When we're thinking about sunscreens, in theory, having an antioxidant in there is great because you know sunscreens can only protect you so much from sun. You're still gonna get some oxidative stress as it relates to excess of free radicals from sun exposure. Having antioxidants in there may offset that, which can be really helpful, not only from an anti-aging perspective, but also for those of you who deal with hyperpigmentation. We all know that the sun aggravates hyperpigmentation. So niacinamide is great in that regard. Speaking of hyperpigmentation, it actively helps with hyperpigmentation by slowing down the spread of pigment packets from pigment producing cells, melanocytes that live in the basal layer of your epidermis, that's the bottommost layer. Um, and they, they're there making pigment and they transfer it to keratinocytes. But niacinamide says, hey, slow down, stop doing that. So in effect, it helps to prevent and clear out the staining, if you will, of, of the epidermis with pigment. So it's, it's great in that regard. And it has anti-redness properties. CeraVe in general is just a great brand to lean into if you're somebody who has atopic dermatitis, you have rosacea, you have sensitive skin, you have acne, um, and, and your acne is very fickle. It seems to get aggravated by most skincare products. You might try this, not a guarantee, but CeraVe is formulated to be free of common irritants and allergens, but include ingredients that support the skin barrier are evidence-based uh, and they have effective formulas. So another sunscreen that I finished is one I really, really like. I think it was one of my sunscreen favorites a few years ago of the year and it's the Neutrogena Invisible Daily Defense Face Serum. The reason I like this so much is A, the consistency. It's a really nice lightweight fluid formula. I love that it's an organic sunscreen. There's no zinc, there's no titanium dioxide, so there's no white cast. And I love that it's water resistant. Water resistant SPF 60, I mean, these are powerful sunscreens in that regard. So this is a great option for daily moisturizing needs, but you can also rely on it if you're gonna be active outdoors and you want something comfortable to wear on your face, you want something comfortable to wear on your face that plays well with your makeup, doesn't cause pilling. The other reason I like the high SPFs like this is that they kind of compensate for our tendency to under apply, which is really hard to overcome. You need to apply sunscreen quite thick in order to actually achieve the stated SPF. It turns out that higher SPF is 
ultimately better at protecting us from a sunburn in real world use conditions, just how we apply sunscreen. One last thing I wanna mention about this, while I love niacinamide, love it, love it, love it. Great ingredient, multifunctional. Some of you out there are sensitive to it, irritates your skin, and you struggle to find sunscreens, moisturizers, skincare in general, free of niacinamide because something's good, skincare brands now wanna put it in everything. So if you are sensitive to it, it becomes challenging to avoid. This does not have niacinamide. So try it out if you were sensitive to niacinamide. This is probably bottle number four or five of the skin. 1004 Madagascar Centella Hyalu Sika Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50 PA4+. This sunscreen I adore and it's a Korean brand. I've tried many of their products and a lot of them are quite good. This sunscreen has compounds from Centella, which are anti-inflammatory and good for some of the same benefits that we already kind of mentioned with niacinamide in terms of reducing possibly um, oxidative stress in the skin, helping with barrier function, calming down irritation and redness. This does have niacinamide in it. Um, so if you're sensitive, be aware of that. But like I said, I really like niacinamide. Hyaluronic acid is hydrating, helps improve water retention in skin's outermost layer. So I like that aspect of this. The formula is very hydrating, very moisturizing, not the least bit greasy. It is an organic sunscreen, uh, meaning it doesn't have zinc or titanium dioxide. It has UV filters, some of which are not approved for use in sunscreens here in the US. When you try sunscreens outside of the US, it's not to say that they're superior, but a lot of times because they have more ingredients they're allowed to use at their disposal, I do believe they can create more cosmetically acceptable formulations. And the Korean and Japanese sunscreens, in my experience, are some of the best in terms of the way they look, the way they feel on the skin, while also offering really good sun protection. So this is a great option. It is not water resistant though. This is one for your daily moisturizing needs but if you're gonna be doing sport or something of that sort, you're gonna to wanna to choose a water resistant one. No white cast here, comes out blue, but that disappears. Um, I really like this if you have dry or oily skin. I think you would get along with it. If you have tried Isentree's Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel, one of my all time favorite sunscreens as a side note, I think you'll like this quite a bit. It's a similar consistency to that. That particular sunscreen came in one of my Korean advent calendars, which were gifted to me, um, but I have used that so many times before and bought it myself multiple times. And, and this also came in one of the Korean advent calendars, new to me, loved it. Uh, finish it up. It's the Ionic Centella Calming Daily Sunscreen. Like the Skin 1004, this is an organic sunscreen, so there's no zinc, there's no titanium dioxide, didn't leave a white cast. It has likewise compounds from Centella, which are anti-inflammatory, good for, in theory, combating oxidative stress. It's not water resistant. In contrast to the Skin 10041, this is a richer consistency. This is more of a, this is a heavier cream. So if you have oily skin, I think you'll still like it, but you might find it feels a little greasy for you. It doesn't look greasy in my opinion, maybe a little shiny, but not greasy. Um, it's very, it's a very moisturizing formula. I'll say that. Like the others that I've mentioned, it does have niacinamide, so you would have to avoid. I need to look and see if Ionic has any other sunscreens because Ionic has some really good products from what I have tried out and tested over the years. Um, it's a soft texture, which I would agree. It, it does feel nice and soft. It's a pleasurable thing to put on the skin. It spreads really easily on the skin surface. So I like that because I find that not only is it more efficient to apply things that spread easily on the skin surface, but I find that it is less likely that you run into like pilling when things spread easily and you don't have to tug and rub on your skin as much. It just goes on like a dream comfortably and you enjoy applying it. Um, no issue with this around my eyes. Used it, you know, on my upper and lower eyelids, all around my eyes. No problemo in that regard. All right, and then last but not least, this is from e.l.f. Uh, it's their Whoa Glow SPF 30 um, Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. So this is a tinted sunscreen. I believe it comes in four different shades. I have the shade Sunbeam, which is the lightest shade. It's an organic sunscreen, so there's no zinc or titanium dioxide. There's no white cast. 
The tint on this is glowy. <laughs> so it gives you almost like a bronzy glow, which I kind of liked. I would often get comments, what are you, are you wearing sunless tanner? What are you wearing on your face when I would wear this? It's not glittery like some other kind of glowy tinted sunscreens. I'm looking at you, uh, super goop glow screen. It's not like that. Uh, it is, it's, it's marketed as something that is sun protection plus makeup primer. It does do well under makeup. So you put it on, allow it to absorb, dry down fully. Then you come on over with your makeup and you don't get you know, issues with the makeup kind of peeling up and, and, and going on oddly. Uh, I don't know why I had that intonation there. <laughs> this does have niacinamide. Again, many benefits, but if you're sensitive, you would want to avoid it. It has hyaluronic acid, which is hydrating. And it has squalane, an emollient that can soften and smooth rough skin. Not water resistant. So again, this is one for days when you're mostly indoors um, and you want a little bit of tint. So the tint comes from iron oxides. Iron oxides, as it turns out, may actually help protect your skin from visible light, namely blue light. And that's important, especially if you're someone who has a deeper skin tone that is prone to hyperpigmentation because a lot of that hyperpigmentation is actually not only driven by UV from the sun, but it's driven by visible light from the sun. Visible light is what we actually see. That's what actually we see. It's what illuminates our world. We don't see ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun, but we see visible light and we see all the colors at once, but there's red, there's green, there's yellow, there's all the colors of the rainbow in there, and the blue light's part of that, of that light actually affects the skin of people with deeper skin tones in a negative way. It leads to more stubborn and more long-lasting hyperpigmentation. Now, to be clear, that blue light, the dose of it that you get from the sun, that's relevant to hyperpigmentation and deeper skin tones. But we're also exposed to blue light from like computer screens, devices, very, 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 very low dose from those things, not likely to be contributory. I say that because a lot of times you'll run into marketing campaigns or ads, social media posts, people saying, our devices are making our skin age and cause hyperpigmentation. The blue light coming from our devices is negligible. What you need to worry about in that regard is the blue light that your skin is exposed to from the sun. Now, in contrast to UVB, which is the part of ultraviolet radiation from the sun that largely is responsible for a sunburn, UVB gets blocked out by window glass. UVA, the other ultraviolet radiation component, does not get blocked out by window glass. So if you're sitting close to a window, you need to be aware of the fact that the rays that penetrate deeply into your skin and destroy your collagen are still coming through. So if you tend to work by an open window and get a lot of sun exposure through that window, you need to be wearing sunscreen because that's a lot of UVA, but you also need to be worried about the blue light from the, the sun, the visible light, because it too comes through the window. So if you have hyperpigmentation, melasma, and you sit next to a window with direct sunlight hitting your face, make sure you're wearing sunscreen to protect and help with your hyperpigmentation as well as protect against premature skin aging. Uh, because that is, that's still a relevant dose when you're sitting close to a window. Of course, it'll vary a lot depending on the time of day you are, the latitude and all of those things, but I do suggest wearing sunscreen when you sit by a window. Like for example, if you work in an office, with a bunch of windows and your desk is right next to one. You get a lot of sun exposure that way. Neglected territory in the sun protection game, you know, people often forget to apply sunscreen to their ears, sometimes negligent on their forehead, uh, the neck, but the lips are also neglected territory. Now, to be clear, you can put any sunscreen you want on your lips, the same sunscreen you put on your face, you can put on your lips. However, I find a lot of times, I don't know if it's the way that the creams and lotions just are not really formulated necessarily with lip skin in mind. I find they can be a little drying on the lips, sometimes irritate my lips. I prefer an SPF lip balm, which SPF lip balms, is it just me? They seem to be a rare breed these days. I don't know if they're more difficult, more expensive to formulate in comparison to a cream or lotion. Shouldn't be because we have all these sunscreen sticks and they're more or less the same thing. As a side note, sunscreen sticks also work great on the lips if you, if you can't find an SPF lip balm. But 
I was shading CarMax in a Shop With Me video because CarMax is a lip balm that people love and adore, but it has ingredients that commonly irritate the lips and they commonly do so in somewhat of a delayed fashion, leading to a disconnect. The user applies CarMax and it feels good. CarMax has a very soothing property to it by virtue of ingredients like camphor. But then those ingredients cause irritation that shows up later. So the user is like, oh, I need more CarMax to help my irritated lips. My lips are irritated again, I need more CarMax. The cycle repeats itself. So I was explaining that in a Walgreens shop with me video and lo and behold, I was like, oh wait, CarMax has a new product, what is this? Their WeatherGuard Moisturizing Lip Balm. SPF 30 water resistant. Water resistance is a really important feature, I will say, in an SPF lip balm because just think about it. Lips, a lot more rubbing off, spit, saliva, it's the same thing as spit, um, food, beverages, rubbing it off. Water resistance is a nice feature to have in there. This, in, con in contrast to traditional CarMax, it comes in the jar that everybody loves. This does not have like the camphor, the salicylic acid, those you know irritating ingredients. It does, however, have flavorant in it, um, which is a common reason for lip irritation. Flavorants in lip balms, common, common culprit there. Um, but I decided to try it anyway, and I finished it up, one tube of it. The B-roll I'm showing you here is the other tube because it came in a pack of two tubes. I, I actually liked it, but it did irritate my lips a little bit. Kind of felt a little bit of tingling, and almost a bit of swelling. Sometimes the vermilion of my lips would get a little seemingly dry with this, so I would not repurchase. So the skin on the lips is a lot more vulnerable just by virtue of the anatomy there. Um, the, the makeup of the skin of the lips is very different from the rest of your face, and you do see a lot of skin cancers on the lips. Protecting the lips is really important. So if you were curious about that one, it's not horrible. Uh, it did seem like it was a little bit irritating for me, but otherwise I liked it enough to reapply it consistently enough to finish it up within the span of several months. All right, y'all, those are the sunscreens that I finished up over these past few months. I have a few more in progress, which will probably make an appearance when we head into summer, which will be here before you know it. Let us know in the comments though, if there's a sunscreen that you have newly discovered and fell in love with. It's tremendously valuable for me to see your comments about products that you have tried out that I have never tried or mentioned or you know seen before, because it's like, wow, I need to try that then. Your recommendations are so helpful. So please share that in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you watch my skincare empties video where I go over all the skincare I finished up over the past few months. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.